Dear Saints of God at Trinity Lutheran and Cody, welcome to worship on this All Saints Sunday. It's a special day for us. We are welcoming nine new Saints of God into our congregation, and we're going to celebrate that outdoors with a little old-fashioned hot chocolate sort of treat bar. So if you're watching now and you have time, maybe just jump in your car quick, throw on a coat, gloves, and join us for some hot chocolate with our new members at about 10.30 a.m. Continuing in this practice of doing the Wyoming thing, just throwing on the clothes that we have for other outdoor activities and yet using it to be in our parking lot with one another, socially distanced, sharing time together, celebrating milestones. In line with that tradition, join us on November 15th. We're going to have a tailgate chili feed to celebrate Pam Betters, whose many, many years here as treasurer we have cherished and we've been so uh, blessed to have Pam with us. And so come again, throw on mittens and warm boots and come and say thank you to Pam and share us, share with us a time for some chili and a tailgate party. Let us begin with our confession and the assurance of forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives us all our sin and whose mercy endures forever. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. So let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your Spirit, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your heart through faith. Amen. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. On this All Saints Sunday, we will remember together the lives of the saints at Trinity Lutheran Church that we lost this year, and we'll light a candle for each of them. After I've named the people that we've lost at Trinity, I'll continue to light candles, and I ask you, to name out loud or in the silence of your hearts those that you have loved and lost and have commended to God. Karna Morton, Don Lindshield, Rosalie Clems, Celeste Brink, David Nelson. Dorothy DeBerg, Fern Siegley,
Lord, you have surrounded us with so great a cloud of witnesses. Grant that we may be encouraged by the example of your servants and that we may persevere in the course that is set before us. And at the last, share in your eternal joy with all the saints in light through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please pray with me the prayer of the day for this All Saints Sunday. Almighty God, you have knit your people together in one communion in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Grant us grace to follow your blessed saints in lives of faith and commitment and to know the inexpressible joys you have prepared for those who love you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading is from Revelation. After this I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvations belong to our God, who is seated on the throne, and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne, and around the elders, and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, singing, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom, and thanksgiving and honor, and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are those robed in white, and where have they come from? I said to them, Sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason, they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple, and the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them, nor any scorching heat, for the Lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd and will guide them to springs of water of life, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel for this All Saints Sunday is from Matthew 5. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up to the mountains, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Amen. Dearly loved in the Lord, grace, mercy, and peace to you this day. From God our Creator and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So one of my favorite prayers in the Evangelical Lutheran Book of Worship has been reprinted. You have it on your screen today. And the prayer goes like this. 
O oh God, you have called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending, by paths as yet untrodden, through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love is supporting us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now, isn't that just the perfect prayer for this particular time in our lives, in our church, and even in our country? I usually like this prayer for graduations, for moving day, for ending one career and starting up another. And as I have always read it, it's a very hopeful prayer with the expectation of something new and exciting that is about to begin. But right now, we are a people enduring ventures of which we cannot see the ending. We are walking paths we've never known before. And the perils, oh yeah, they are absolutely unknown. It feels like a dark night. Theologian Richard Rohr calls this time a time of global disorder. And he says it's already upon us by reason of our planet, our history, our politics, our economy, the COVID-19 pandemic, and the widespread increase in mental and emotional unhealth. Global disorder. Mental medical experts are predicting that the next six to 12 weeks of this pandemic will be some of the darkest in memory. And as we are heading into literal darkness, as the hours of daylight are dwindling, every day, every day gets darker. Daylight saving time, I usually love this day because it means I get just one extra sweet hour of sleep in the morning and for some reason I just love that. It feels like a gift. But we will pay for that extra sweet hour of slumber with the effects of darkness even later just this afternoon and the many darkening afternoons in the next few months. The darkness will deepen until that shortest day of the year, December 21st. It's going to get worse before it gets better. This is new for us. All this unknown, all this chaos through which we are living. This um, upended, unpredictable life that we are experiencing is new to us. But it is not new. It's not unknown to the myriad Christ followers who are our ancestors in the faith. We hear about them from our Revelation reading. These multitudes from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, they've lived through everything imaginable, everything history has ever thrown at the people of God. And they've endured to sing the song we hear today. Right now, the saints who are singing before the throne of the Lamb, their white robes washed in the blood of the sacrificial Lamb, right now they are encouraging us through this dark day with this beautiful song they share with us. Amen. Blessing and honor and glory and wisdom, thanksgiving and power and might be to our God forever and forever. Amen. The saints who have gone before us are an example of what it means to endure through the hard things in life, knowing that your only strength for that journey comes from leaning into God. My youngest child, my son Eli, left last week to move to Texas to begin this next chapter of his life after college. 
And as I said goodbye to him, I, you know, I thought, well, who knows when I'll see him again with all this COVID. I don't anticipate traveling, nor do I anticipate him coming home during that time. And I thought of all our ancestors who have said goodbye to children. Some as their child went to war, some as their child passed away through famines or plagues or other disasters, accidents. Those of us who have European heritage celebrate our grandparents and great-grandparents for their courage who took the risk and immigrated to America because the lack of food and opportunity made them need to leave. We celebrate the ones who left. They're the ones we remember and know. But it's easy to forget the moms and dads and siblings of those who left. And they were left on the other side of the ocean, never to see their relatives again. The saints of God, dear sisters and brothers, have seen all of this, have experienced all of this. They bear the scars of life and sing the songs of faith that carried them through their own dark times. They model the way for us to go out, as our prayer says, go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love is supporting us. This time, in my estimation, this is not a time to try to buck against or resist this moment or to pretend that what's going on is not hard, you saints of God. And yes, I'm calling you one of the saints of God. As we look at what it means to be a saint in the New Testament, we recognize that the saints of God are not celebrity Christians who have performed miracles. You, in fact, are one of the saints of God. You baptized, child of God. You are one who lives in trust of Christ for every good thing. That's the saint of God. One of the most helpful questions we can ask in a time when we think we are only struggling or only losing, it all seems like nothing good is happening, we can ask this question, what does this crisis make possible? And I think that is the space God always works in, where we only see death and loss or frustration and interruption to what we want, in that space, I believe God is working for good. This crisis may be making possible a space where we learn to do things that we don't currently know how to do. One thing that stands out to me is to learn how to be alone during this time. And in that aloneness, to know how to turn to God meaningfully for our emotional and mental health. That's one thing. Another thing I think has the possibility of being transformed, that this crisis has made possible, the space the air between people in the United States in these past 20 to 30 years has become deadly. The air in the public spaces between political parties, between races, and even between relatives and friends has become putrid and deadly, just in how we talk to each other. The way we speak to each other and about each other is just awful. We have villainized the other in media and on Facebook. It has been poisonous. And now as if to illustrate exactly that, now the literal air between us has become poisonous. 
just to breathe it in is to cause trouble. The virus passed in the air is harming us in the same way the air between us politically and socially has crushed our hearts and our spirits and our sense of being a community. What this crisis makes possible is that a new vision of our deep connectedness could become tangible and real for us again, because we see it now, we see this virus is poisoning the space between us. We see with this virus, it's an illustration that we are so connected throughout the whole world. We share the same space. Doesn't matter where you live, we share the same air. It is possible that because of this virus, we will start to deeply understand again that how we speak about each other matters. It makes us soul sick when we speak badly, maliciously about one another and hear those things spoken about us. So if one becomes sick with nasty speech, it spreads and we all become sick. Because we're not separate. We're not only individuals. We as a world are one. And this is no small thing. We might say, oh yeah, that sounds like a, you know, a line in a commercial or an advertisement. We as a world are one, but it is no small thing. To have a change in perspective from seeing only our individualism or only our tiny tribes, going from that to seeing our deep oneness that Jesus himself constantly speaks about. You and I are one and we're one with God and we're one with each other. We are one body. Having that become our shared vision would be quite a transformation to have that be what guides us as a vision. I'm trusting that God is working that transformation in us even as we worship together today. This next chapter of the worldwide pandemic and the next year or two is for sure a venture of which we cannot see the ending. It will call on us all to walk paths we've never known before. And the perils still in front of us are definitely unknown. But you, saints of God, you who trust in God for every good thing, let us go out like the saints of God who have gone before us. This is our time now to endure the unthinkable, the painful, the unknown, and to trust only that God's hand is leading us and that his love is truly supporting us. And yet, too, we go out with this song in our hearts, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. So let's pray this prayer together now so that the air between us becomes healthy and ripe with these words of faith and love. Oh God, you have called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending, by paths as yet untrodden, through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love is supporting us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
Longing for Christ's reign to come among us, we pray for the outpouring of God's power on the church, the world, and all in need. Lord of all the saints, we praise you for evangelists and martyrs who sacrifices witness to your gospel across time and space. Inspire us by their courage to carry our faith to new people and places around us. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Lord of every place, the universe proclaims your greatness from generation to generation. Bless the work of naturalists, conservationists, and park rangers who train our attention to the wonders of the world you have made. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Lord of every nation, guide this country, red states and blue states, rural voters and urban voters, young and old, as we share in another national election. Kindle hearts eager to understand our common needs and seek our common good. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Lord of every blessing, your son's blessing, came to those living with poverty, grief and hunger, thirst, and persecution. Shape our vision of the saints to match his own. Awaken in us your call to serve all who suffer. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Lord of every time, 
Countless are the multitudes you have called by name and gathered to yourself. Comfort us as we grieve those who have died in the past year. Karna Morton, Don Linshield, Rosalie Klentz, David Nelson, Dorothy DeBerg, Celeste Brink, and Fern Siegley. In faith, may we join with them in ceaseless praise. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Receive our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, until that day when you gather all creation around your throne where you will reign forever and ever. Amen. So please pray with me the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now receive the benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Amen. Amen.